may jump to right side. But there is no definite answer that exactly what is contingency is. The meaning of contingency, another example to make you understand contingency is the weather report. You listen to radio news about their telling about the weather, weather forecast tomorrow, there may be rain. Now the government report is saying. Sometimes we, we, we used to listen in our country. I don't know how good uh, in Qatar or in your countries, but in our country they will say uh, it may rain or it may not rain. So what we learn, what we, as a normal uh, public, what we will understand? Should I take umbrella tomorrow or don't I take umbrella tomorrow? We don't know. So, uh, from an accounting point of view, there is something called a, a concept of contingencies. So, so this uh, this was actually in my home. <laughs> it was there anyways. I remember this from uh, the contingency. Before two days there was an argument when will uh, the heat come. Mm. So they are saying after we sight the moon, maybe it will come on that day, maybe it will not come on that day. Yes. There is some choice. Exactly. So, continuous. Uh, Actually, this is we study from standard number alias that is. It's for recording, recording for provisions and contingencies. First, let's understand what the contingency is, then we will try to understand what the provision is. Uh, and uncertain event. Do you understand the meaning of the word uncertain? I will explain you uncertain now. This is my Google. Not sure, right? Hmm. Hmm. Not sure. Clear, no? So it is uh, an uncertain event. I will not come. I will not come. I will not come. Outcome of which could be favorable or Now, if I go back to this uh, head, you see, that there's a lot of steel, rubble, and all that, concrete pieces. If we dump that side, he might die. By mistake, if someone comes and disturb here, he will get tension, he will dump that side. And if we cannot manage his balance, he may end up in one of these steel and he may die. So, uh, outcome of which is either it could be favorable or unfavorable. Both. Yeah, both possibilities are there. And Nothing is predicted definitively. You cannot like confirmly say this that this is like this. So it's like you know uh, uh, very vague. We take about uh, from a professional example. Good example is court case. Let's say uh, we as a business have a court case with one other customer or supplier. So this court case is, uh, was filed on let's say 15th of November. And now we are preparing accounts to 31st December. So 
uh, next hearing of the case is on the 10th of April. Until then, do we know what the outcome of the case? We do. So we are here. So let's say, why file a case against somebody asking for some uh, damages? But still, the judge has said, okay, our uh, the next hearing is on 15th of or 10th of April. Until then, I cannot claim that I am going to receive one million dollars. I can't. I may receive, I may not receive. But there has something has actually happened on 15th of November. But the outcome of that, what has happened, is we don't know. So that is what you call convenience. That way. So from a standard point of view, This is the right definition from the standards. A possible obligation that arises from past events whose existence will be confirmed only by the occurrence or non-occurrence. That's what I said, uncertain. It may happen, it may not happen. Of one or more uncertain future event, not wholly within the control of the entity. We don't have any control. The cat is dumping, I cannot control. I don't have the remote to control the, the way the cat should dump. So, uh, so that is what the contingent, contingency means. The contingent liability, so this contingency there are two types of contingency. One is Contingent liability. Other one is contingent assets. What is contingent liability? You filing a case against me. In my books, I may have to pay you the damage or I may not have to pay you the damage. That is contingent liability. In your books, if you win the case, you will receive a uh, what you call uh, damage or money or lump sum, something. But if you only, if you receive or if you win in the case, we still don't know. So that is what is in the So it depends on which uh, side of the uh, books that you are in. So contingent assets should be recognized? No, no, no. Nothing should be recognized. Both contingent assets and contingent liability should never be recognized. According to IES 37. The moment you realize it is a contingent, contingent then you don't pick it. Is that clear? So, so uh, only, only the notes only get to this. You actually have to write a disclosure saying that, for example, court case. You, the shareholders need to understand this. Then you have to put it in your financial statement saying that. There has been a court case ongoing, the judgment is pending on the next hearing and as of now we don't know the outcome. And they are claiming a fine of 10 million dollars just to make themselves understand the significance of this contingency. Clear? Yeah. So, so with regards to our debt, yeah. a receiver debt, hmm. you are filing a case against a customer. Okay. Now that particular incident mm. will be a contingency See, or now, a bandit provisions. Uh, that's right. Now you already recognize sales yeah. and then you recognize receivable. So let's say two million dollars you need to receive from this man. Now he is not paying you. Okay? So now one, one point is about accounting of the debts. Accounting of the debts is internal management decision. Whether to keep it or to write off. 
So there is not, no relationship to that on your contingency. But when you submit or file a case, the court may give you an order that okay, you pay to 500,000. Now you are working on this 500,000. That's only the contingency. So in short, if the management decided as a bad debt provision, yes, we can keep you write it off, right off, and the same we file the case against the customer. Yes, that can be also put that in should the be uh, disclosed, disclosed as, as a contingent. Uh, so both we can disclose. Correct. The first one you should account, you should write off. Right. Second one you should disclose. Clear? Write off and then uh, for example we will say bad debts, right? Yeah, we will write off. Exactly. We receive this. Uh, then, uh, when if you if you actually receive, then that's how the income. Right. You you may receive next year, mm. December you may write off. February, the judge told you, okay, pay the money. Then, if we pay in that money, then you have to debit cash, credit of the income. If it is other way, it takes other expense. Of course. Okay, now let's talk about This subject area is often highlighted by the ACT examining team as being one of the least well answered. What do you understand by this? this is it's a bit com complicated. <laughs> it's a bit complicated, that's what the ACT exam says. But to be honest, one of the easiest of If you understand the concept clearly, the rest is easy. The examining team commented that the students were not learning key definitions and display an inability to apply the theory to practical situations. Make sure you read the material thoroughly and work through the examples in question to cement. You understand? In, sim in simple terms, you should understand the basic concept clearly. So what is provision? Is the liability of uncertain timing of an amount. So what we need to understand here, what the real uh, crux of this meaning. Now let's say for example, electricity bill. Electricity bill uh, we receive like uh, Every, uh, for example, month of June, I receive 5th of July. Or oh, month of August, I receive 7th of August. Sorry, month of July, I receive 7th of August. So like that, it happens. So now I prepare accounts for one year, 30 December 2020, for example. So in the month of December, uh, do I know actual electricity expense how much? That time, I'm, I'm, uh, it's, there are two things. Timing is uncertain. I don't know. Uh, actually, amount is uncertain. More than timing here, amount is uncertain. We don't know how much is that. But for sure, I have incurred, I have received the service, electricity service, I got it. But the uh, Karama did not send me the bill. Since the Karama did not send me the bill, I don't know exactly how much is that. So what I am then going to do, I am going to look into the past 11 months. 
find out the average, and then I have to book that average as for that month. This is one situation of provision. Is a provision is a liability or not? First of all, I need to understand the definition of the word liability. Liability is an obligation. Liability is an obligation, meaning I am under uh, obligation that I should settle this. I am uh, legally, I am under uh, obligation. Why? I have received some services in the past or I have received some goods in the past for which I have not paid yet. Correct? So that's the word liability. Now, so when I when I say liability, and if I write a circle like this, provision is one sub-circle of the liability. So provision is an example for liability. Clear? So that is the definition that uh, they are explaining here. Now, with regard to recognition, now you see once we satisfy that it is a liability, the, this provision is a liability, then the meaning of recognition is I have to record that in my books of accounts. Provision will create expense or income. It will create expense. Provisions will create an expense and that I need to recognize. Question is when and how? This is the question. The standard IAS 37 talks about this. It talks about an entity has a present obligation. They have using two words, legal or constructive. Very interesting. Legal or constructive. Legal, we can understand easily. Good example, you sign a contract. You sign a contract to uh, uh, provide cleaning services with one cleaning company. So, my office, I am signing a contract with one cleaning company. So, legally there has been a document now. A binding contract is available. And that people coming, cleaning and going. So, do I need to pay them or no need to pay them? I need to pay That's a legal obligation. Now what about constructive obligation? It's not necessarily formal or legal, but it is because of the uh, circumstantial events that uh, forcing you to uh, under, uh, undertake the obligation. Good example. You, uh, go, you With your family, you go to one of your friend's house. The friend is given the key for you and he, they went. You stayed there for a week time. So now, let's say now Friday. Tomorrow, Saturday, the friend's family come in. You have to go out of the house. So what uh, you should, if you are a courteous man, what you must be doing? You should be cleaning the house in the right way and keeping the house as at the time you receive the house. Am I right? But are you legally obliged to do this? No. You don't need to. But if you don't do this, what will happen? The relationship is going to jeopardize. If I bring a commercial example of this, let's say uh, you are getting a land from the government, especially Middle East. In Qatar, the government is giving land for uh, business people to put up uh, building and then factories and all that. And they say that contract is for 40 years. 
and this uh, you are uh, what you do is you then uh, start you receive the land you start your activities and then you uh, really uh, uh, there is a word here you all know the meaning of this word contamination contamination is a uh, mixing contamination is like de uh, damaging contamination contamination is like uh, pollution uh, huh? pollution uh, creating a, a pollution is one way of contaminating then one kaalum contamination kondada we will ask the shake So you will sign up a warranty agreement that 
when you buy some parts you find some paper and it's a paper is written in a very small font 2000 uh, bullet points no one reads it and in uh, online also you have to click that check box if you don't click that check box it will not move into the next page but before that you read all this it will take like you know all your time so in short determining the selling price yeah this uh, warranty cost also is included no cost of the uh, item not the selling price see to determine the selling price you need the profit margin only correct but you know the cost this will this. Be, this can be part of the cost for you now what is one step to obligation can you read this fit company also sells non novas it does not offer a warranty on its product however it has a reputation you see it has a reputation for making reasonable repairs free of charge to loan novas bought from the business customers by from fit company all expert to receive this benefit in the agreement there is nothing mentioned but as a matter of customary practice as a matter of reputation the company giving some free service see you are one customer and you already a customer then i am thinking of buying one loan over i am talking to you you telling me my friend don't worry you can go and buy from there why they are doing some free service so the an understanding is a thing and that understanding becomes a constructive You understand? Baha? Yes. So, uh, so this is this is this exact illustration is about constructive obligation. Probable is more likely than not to occur. If the chances are more than fifty percent, it is almost sure things will happen. But the chances are less than fifty percent. It won't happen. So this can be interpreted as a greater than a fifty percent chance of occurring. So you three conditions. What are those three conditions? Present obligation. Be the legal law constructive. Second, probable uh, uh, probable to occur. Third, reliability. If you make all this, then you will recognize this then the measurement how to measure the amount recognized as a provision should be best estimate of the expenditure to require to settle the present obligation at the end of the reporting period forget about all this simple example electricity bill we talked about it december month i don't have the bill in my hand but last 11 months i have the bill so take the total divide by 11 and take that amount that is the best estimate that's what we call it best estimate the estimate will be determined by the judgment of the entity's management same thing that who is doing this calculation accountant of the company he has a good judgment because last 11 months i was used to pay 350 real 325 real 375 real like this so take the total put it in one basket divide by 11 and then get the terms clear so and here one mathematics we will use known as expected value of course let's see what is that Let's say uh, I am uh, I am uh, going to invest hundred thousand dollars in a project, and then when I invest, if I might succeed, I might lose the project. If I succeed, I have three chances of making good profit. I medium and low high i have 40% chance medium i have 30% chance and the low also 30% chance high uh, my profit is uh, 200000 dollars 
Medium, my profit is $125,000. 30% low, my profit is $50,000. So, my question is, if I succeed, what is my total profit? How to calculate my total profit? If I lost, my loss is $175,000 loss. Now, my question is, how much is the profit at that point? How to calculate that? From your mathematics studies, there is a concept called uh, decision keys. Uh, who are studying F2, you will come back from that later. So, any idea? Atif, do you know or you don't know? See, if you will make good business, you will get a profit of how much? 200,000. But what is the chances of making good business? So how much is the mathematical uh, profit you will get there? Uh, sorry, before that, can you take the total of this three? Always remember, the probabilities must always be either 100% or 1. So we are satisfying that condition. Now, what you do is, you multiply this by 40%. You multiply this by 30%. And then you multiply this by 30%. What are the answers you are getting? How much first one? 80,000. 80,000. Second one? 37. 37? 37,500. 37,500. Third one? 15. Now what you do is take the total of these three. That will give you the answer. If you succeed, your total property is the answer to the, the total of the these three answers. That's what the expected value report. So in arriving a uh, provision, if you have to make best estimate, and then if you happen to use some mathematics, this is the mathematics you will use. Clear? So how much is the answer? 80 plus uh, 50, 95. So 132,500. And if you make a loss, how much is the loss is? 100. So here again, uh, you see, uh, now how much you need to invest for this? And how much your profit is? So uh, what is the net answer then? 32,500. But what is the loss? 172,000. So you should invest or you should not invest? Not invest. Why? The loss is? Uh, it will be like 275,000 loss. Correct? Because this 100,000 also investment. And then you are making a loss of 175. But the profit is only 32,500. So it's better not to invest. That's, a, that's a another theory. I'm not here to talk about that. Because it's, we are not uh, we are talking about accounting. But in provision, if the management need to use best estimate, if they have to use one technique, the technique is expected to know this is the method. Just counter to to understand that. Okay, now can we try this question now? Yeah. Can I move to the next page? Okay. Hmm. If you understood the discussion, what I did? You can 
when the answer to this. Seventy-five percent chances are there that you won't have any defects. Twenty percent chances are there minor defects. Five percent chances are there major defects. So, what is the warranty provision? Other, how to do? So only is twenty percent. Mirror or something?